Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dorian Show. Today, I have probably one of the most friendly comics I've met in LA. Thank you, Dorian. Give it up, Denny Glasser, everyone. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you. It's good to be here. I'm grateful for the opportunity. How's it going, dude? Your wife's out of town? Wife's out of town, so... You've been uh, enjoying it? You know what that means, doing a lot of open mics. <laughs> nice, well, nice. Yeah, getting getting a lot of comedy reps in. Yeah, where she uh where she go? Back home to Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you're just chilling, chilling, doing doing open mics. Yeah. Hikes, mics. Do you go hiking by yourself? Yeah. I just did uh Fryman, 4 miles 4 miles today. Fryman? Yeah. I'm going to have to Where is that at? Uh Studio City. But okay. decent parking. They have a little parking lot. So just okay. so you guys I want know, to put that on the on my list. I've been trying. I just been doing like running. I, no, I do a Hollywood uh, the reservoir. I walk. Oh there yeah, almost every day. That's nice. If I have a chance, yeah, I do like running. Except that if I want to get off like the road, like it's a little rocky. I don't like falling. I'm a little worried. Yeah, you should probably go with someone if you're going to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not bad. <laughs> I just don't want to fall. It's just, But it's kind of boring if you're just walking up the road and back. That's true. Um, but yeah, that's cool. That's nice. What's what's How dif how difficult is the one you've... Fryman? How difficult is that? It's like mild. It's not real hard. Okay. I mean, there's the first part's like a slow incline up. Nothing's real steep. Okay. And is then it the, paved or is it like rocky? Not like, paved, but is, it, is there a trail? Yeah, it's definitely a trail. Like the first 5% paved and then you okay. get into like you know the yeah. the rocky road but it's I gotta, nice i gotta do it is it a is it a, you do a round or is it like an in and out uh this today i actually to... switched it up i went all the way through which is kind of like one big like i don't know loop reverse c if you will oh, okay. and then i touch the gate just because i have a little ocd i need to do that and then i go i went all the way back i retraced my steps mm -hmm. four miles Oh, okay, nice. Because you could cut through like little neighborhoods and like do a full circle and get back to the parking lot that way. Mm -hmm. But my uncle called, and uh, you get better phone service as an inside tip if you just on the trail go right back on the trail. If you cut through the houses, they don't like sprint. Nice, dude. Yeah, nice. I gotta try. I gotta put that on the list. Where else do you like? Do you do you like hiking by yourself? Or do you just typically go with your wife? Oh, with the wife. Yeah, um, I'll do fryman by, my, by by myself a little bit, but. Yeah, I, like for example, Malibu. I love that hike. I wouldn't do that by myself. Okay, need my wife there. Okay, do you, you miss her right now, or not at all? I miss her, man. A little bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's not the same without her. I I call my wife Such my a sweet dude. Look at thank you. <laughs> I call my my wife my little gremlin, and uh, I miss yeah. little Grim. You know, it's yeah. the 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 house, the apartment, doesn't feel the same without her. Okay, cool, dude. It's not a home without her. Damn. And Chuck does his best. Chuck's my cat. Um, you know, he's he's yeah. cuddling, he's hanging out with me. Yeah. Probably wondering where I've been today. <laughs> so uh, you're from Ohio? Yes, I am. Dude, there's some famous people coming out of there. Yes. Machine Gun Kelly? Yes. When he was still a rapper. Chappelle. Chappelle. LeBron. LeBron. And you, Denny. Time will tell. Dude, I mean, I don't know. Do you, would you consider yourself the true, the true king of Ohio? No, no, <laughs> can't put that on record. <laughs> Dude, I at least I'm hoping to be the Joker right now of Ohio, and then we'll maybe work up the yeah up to Prince at some point. What uh, what made you uh, move out of here? I uh, always been comedy. Okay, I have been absolutely driven from day one uh, to become a comedian. Okay, so at 19, I moved to Chicago. Oh, shit. Didn't know anybody. Didn't go to college. Um, nice. I think you know my story. Before uh, Chicago, I was a semen wiper. That's <laughs> yeah. that's a, a, a position. A porn set. Close. <laughs> 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 that's a position out on uh, the Great Lakes, 1,000-foot steamship. So I saved up. Oh, I went gosh. to Chicago. Uh, was there for eight years. Did you do like the improv or whatever they do yeah. out there? Yeah. That's, that's Second a City. Thing, right? Okay. My dream originally was Saturday Night Live. Okay. Um, so I've learned 50 impressions. Nice. I, I have 25 plus characters for anyone keeping count at home. And, uh, I did a solo show in Chicago, invited okay. 50 agents. Nice. None of them came. Damn. I did sell it to the show. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't for not, it did was a great it? run. Oh yeah. Okay. There's a recording of it. Is that 
Online. Yeah, I got tons of clips on the old IG page at featuring Denny Glasser. Um, but on the tube, YouTube. Yeah, a little bit on the tube. Uh, so you can find me on there. It was a, it was a successful solo show, but then it it was a big indicator that I should switch some switch it up. Mm-hmm. I was eight, there for eight years. I was just starting to get into stand up comedy my last couple of years there, and I'm like, I'm gonna start a new in L.A. You know, went to the Groundlings, mm-hmm. refocused my stand up career, and four years later. It's been the best move have over you, Chicago. How long have you been here in LA? Four. Since 2019. 2019. One normal year before 2020. Okay, wow. And you did the Groundlings here? Yes. Okay. I made it through last year all the way up to Writing Lab. Okay. And then uh, my director, Roy, uh, said, you're funny, you're talented, you're not a fit, and we're going to cut you. Ooh. And that's all she wrote for Groundlings. So. Do, you, do you feel like the, like the improv scene is kind of like a scam? <laughs> I, I, like a pyramid I, team? I, like I dated a girl that kind of went through all of it in LA and she just says, that, yeah, you just keep paying for class and then you keep going through oh, yeah. it over and over again. Groundlings would take my money right now. I mean, <laughs> and then I respect it. It's a business. Like they, if I wanted to sign yeah. up for, you know, um, you know, how to, you know, write for, you know, a late night show or something, you know, mm-hmm. one of those one-off classes, they'll let you keep going to school, but there's a pathway. Just like Second City, there's a pathway to get to Saturday Night Live. Right. And when you get cut, and even Second City, I graduated the conservatory, and they didn't hire me. So, so I've tried it on the, the whole thing. Yes, I've went to the East Coast Empire, the West Coast Empire. Okay. Well, not the Midwest, but, you know, so both happens, sides of the country. What happens if they didn't, don't pick you for, so what did they pay you for, like, to be a regular at the... Groundlings, right? First, that would them. yeah. So then, if had I got instead of getting cut, had I gotten the thumbs up, you go through writing lab, advanced writing lab, uh-huh. and then there's Sunday Company. Yeah, um, that's Sunday Company is like where Chloe Feynman, who's one of the most recent, you know, Groundling alum, Groundlings alum, yeah, yeah. made it on SNL. Okay, uh, from Sunday Company, you can get plucked, or you can eventually graduate yourself in a yeah, way, yeah. graduate to um, the main company. Okay. And main company is um, when you're like actually getting paid for it. Okay. It's your profession. Maybe you become a part-time teacher, part-time commercial actor. Nice, nice. I thought there was a pathway. But there wasn't? Did it hurt no. that you... Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. I actually was, um, for about a week or two, I was depressed. And I was driving <laughs> around to Hamilton's uh, soundtrack, specifically the King song. Okay. You'll be back. Yeah. Soon you'll see. Yeah, I was so you did screaming. Twelve years that. of improv. Uh, off and on. Okay. Yeah, off wow. and on. I. Uh, it's what I dedicated my whole comedy journey to, and then right. I started to refocus my stand-up career to where it's yeah, at right yeah, now. Yeah. Have you Have you done your own sketches? I mean, it's yeah. totally doable now with that thing. This camera, that mic, kind of sucks, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you could, you could. I feel like it's yeah. There's still gatekeeping and everything, but there's less of it. And SNL is really not that big of a deal. I haven't watched SNL in like a long time. That's where it started to dissipate for me. Um, I'm, I'm, when you realize like people don't really care about it. Besides like, yeah, it's cool saying you're on it. But besides, it's kind of like going to Harvard, right? It's like you want you want that that thing on your resume, but like it was like tiramisu. You know, you want it on your resume. It was great having Second City on my resume, but there's so many tiramisu levels to it where it was like, A, it's not where it once was. I always wanted to bring it back. I don't know if that was my yeah, yeah, ego yeah. in the past. I was like, I'm going to save us now. I'm going to bring it back to a red hooded sweatshirt. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I don't know. Uh, I, Adam Sandler is one of my idols, but I thought I could bring it back. Yeah. Um, and I, I know they've missed impressionists for a long time, so I thought I could hit them with every impression in my back pocket. Yeah. Um, What's and your top three? Top three, Owen Wilson. You already kind of sound like him. I kind of do. It's kind of fantastic. <laughs> Dorian, I, I don't really know how to explain it, but wow. <laughs> Donald really Trump is, you know, it's just, it's been there. It's kind of, Become relevant again. I don't know. It's yeah. <laughs> it's their words, not mine. You know. Um, Does Shane Gillis own that though? I feel like he owns the Trump. Even yeah. though what's his face on SNL did a good job. What's he does a good job. I don't remember his name. I know who you're talking about. The new kid. No, the guy that shot someone. Oh, Alec Baldwin. You know his is really deep. And wow, you know, wow. <laughs> mine, mine's up here. It's Dana Carvey. I <laughs> went to the school of Dana Carvey. 
He's the GOAT, by the way. Love Dana Carvey. Uh, Bill Clinton, probably, even though, you yeah. know, these are a few older. I have some newer impressions, but Bill Clinton will always be one of the old G's for me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> me and Hillary, baby. That Those are good, man. Thank you. Damn. Did you just apply to SNL? Is there, do they have In open way, applications? They have like a, uh, an open... Um, cast thing or whatever they're called. In a way, with, with writing. Um, it, as far as like having a chance as a, like a, a featured player, you mm-hmm. need to have a, an agent... I see. Uh, that can get you in the door. My yeah. agent can help me with uh, commercials. He was not able to get me in SNL, but um, or a foot in the door there at least. Mm-hmm. So um, I focus my attention on my writing, which I have a strong sketch writing background. It's one of the things I did for like five, six years in Second City. And uh, yeah, I uh, sent t- two um, submissions in um, over the past several years. And uh you sign a waiver that they may use your material. So if you right. guys ever see something about a horny Cupid or a toilet that died, I'm not saying I'm saying. Yeah. Have, have you thought about just, have you shot your own sketches like recently? Just you know, put on, on the internet. I did. Uh, I made a big push the past couple of years. I used to do an SNL challenge. I actually made it on serious radio two years ago. Thank you. They found me. Oh, shit. They found nice. me um, because I was doing an SNL challenge every day. What's the SNL challenge? I made it I made it up. It was like, you know, like you see these like TikTok challenges and such where it's like, you know, I'm going to dump this coffee on my head every day until so-and-so recognizes me. I'm like, I'm going to do an SNL character in, or I'm going to do an impression or character every day for SNL until they uh, cast me. Yeah. You know, and uh, every day I go, I'm on my little vinyl floor in my kitchen and I go flying up to the camera and I'm like, you know, I'm going to do uh, Bill Clinton today, you know? And uh, I did that, I think I did it for like 120 days. And a new new character every day? Every, yeah, new character in, or impression every day. Okay. And Sirius uh, Radio got a hold of me um, and uh, they were like, you know, this is like never happened before like no mm-hmm. one's ever done this type of challenge before mm-hmm. um and they wanted me on uh to uh, do an interview and i actually got a chance to uh meet like the cue card guy on snl yeah. and uh they they were like you know we know some people there we're gonna try to you know yeah yeah, yeah. um get get uh your they foot have in the door to know, dude, if that was yeah you think the word would go the word would have to get around. i mean i i mean i didn't hear about it but that's because i don't listen to serious it's people. okay but I'm saying, like, if you're in SNL, you have to, because that went viral. My, you know my stuff? Yeah, basically. It basically went viral. It, it, it got caught on to the... Serious, yeah, but serious I'm saying, XM like, at least, yeah. But then people would know. Like, someone would know someone. That guy probably told a bunch of people, they're like, dude, this guy has been doing I think so. It was the Ron Bennington show. So shout out Ron Bennington show. We love, I love you. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they were like, you know, we know people, you know. Um, they would list off, you mm-hmm. know, all the current and former SNL members that would go on their show. So, like, we're going to at least knock on the door and tell them who Denny Glasser is. Yeah. And, you know, the rest is out of our control. And I was so excited. Get this. I was so excited. This was uh, in 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was doing this from, like, April. Whatever, 120 right, days right. out. So, you know, this end of during April. during the pandemic? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Okay. And uh, I was doing it every day. And then come August, like mid-August, I was uh, took a, a flight home, hung out with my family in Ohio. We're sitting around, and I get a call from New York, New York. Nice. My heart drops. I mean, guys, I have been going for this dream since out of high school. It's everything to me. So my heart legit dropped. I answer the phone. The call drops. And I'm like, Okay, all right, maybe, you know, uh, 30 Rock had some, you know, bad phone connections. I call that number back because I'm like, yeah. I'm not missing this train. If this, right, is my, right. if this is my one chance to talk to someone, and I'm like, you know, they were probably a week or two out from, you know, making their final selections of who's mm-hmm. going to be on that season, their new cast member. And uh, I call that number back, and it was a friend of mine from New York that said, sorry, Denny, I had the wrong Danny on my phone. We still went to Dairy Queen afterwards, <laughs> and uh, my my parents were very proud that. Uh, Dude, I mean that's me. exciting. You, I mean, you made it really far. You know, you got into the. I radio. gave it my that's best. A big deal. I gave it my best, um, and last last year I actually it was like this is my last year doing this, you okay. know, and then I got cut from Groundlings. I'm like that 
took a big hit to my, you know, yeah. my uh, armor that I felt was all built up for us to know. And then, yeah, uh, I I was posting every, at least I, I calmed down. I wasn't doing it every day. I was doing it like once a week challenge where, you know, I do like, you know, here's John Mulaney, you know, yeah. and, or here's uh, Bob from Glenview. That's Mickey Mouse's um, actual guy. Uh, that who, That's my character, Bob from Glenview, like Mickey Mouse. Um, uh, under the hood, if you will, like the guy underneath the mask is Bob from Glenview. Or he made the so like, he made the noise. Yeah, so it's like you know, ha ha, oh boy, hi there, ha ha, <laughs> oh boy, have a great Disney day, ha ha. Yeah, oh yeah. brother, yeah, more like a Disney night, man. You know, I'm Bob from Glenview. So that was Bob, uh, John Mulaney here. I don't know, I, my John's a little <laughs> rusty, but uh, you know, I did these. What do you post them on Instagram? Insta. Vine, Insta, TikTok, a little bit of uh, Facebook Reels. Those are kind of coming back to life. I you could, you could go viral on um, Instagram. Like I, I had this, I mean, I don't know what viral is, but like I, I had, I made a clip of a podcast and it got like 11,000 views on Instagram. And I'm really? Like, That's insane. Wow. And it wasn't like super funny. It was just my friend talking about like jujitsu and I guess I used the right tags. Nice, man. And I'm like, that's. Like, none of my YouTube videos hit, like, even some of them do. I have, like, old YouTube videos that that just, it just keeps, it's, like, my most popular videos. Like, I, where I'll, I'll just, I'll do challenges where I eat, like, fast food for a whole week and still lose <laughs> weight. Like, that one hits all the time. Oh, like, sure. My podcast is, like, it doesn't catch on, but I get it because it's long form. But, but yeah, dude, you could go viral on it. Do you? We'll see. I, how, are, how are your clips with your short form interviews? Doing. those have been doing well um you know benchmark i uh i feel pretty comfortable with the views hitting around you know like between one or two thousand so it's like if you're out there listening yeah i'd love to see do you use the hashtags i think the hashtags I, yeah use the hashtags i definitely build those up um but that's what i focus on now i yeah, focus yeah, on yeah. the interviews i focus on um stand-up clips and i yeah. don't do as much characters or impressions okay do you feel kind anymore. of more do you feel kind of gross like using some uh, certain hashtags? Like if I interview like a, a lady, I'll be like female comedian, <laughs> and I was like, Ugh, I'm Asian comedian. I was like, oh god, you know I me. Mean? Like you look at all my hashtag, it's like, <laughs> I just feel Yo, yeah. gross about it. But no, there's there's definitely some uh, that I I have to like you know really think about it before I yeah, yeah, I yeah. use it because it's like I know what I'm talking about. Some of you may know, but there's also some that are like. He's canceled. Oh, we see. Yeah, yeah. We've seen what we need to see. Dude, you're like the nicest guy. I don't think you would get canceled. I appreciate it. I don't put. I don't post any stand up clips of myself because I like. I know I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's all good. But yeah, dude. So yeah, I mean, I think you should pull in like the stuff you sent to uh, SNL. You should start filming on your own because I feel like you know really? a lot of people and here's the one thing I know about comedians like they're willing to like work for free it's insane <laughs> yeah I'm doing this for free actually yeah he's doing this for free <laughs> though. it's crazy dude it's like midnight right now no I'm just kidding <laughs> you know what I mean like a, no, a, you're a right. lot of people are just down to do stuff down to clown yeah yeah and it sounds I, like and I, from what I see like a lot of people do like like you so it's like I appreciate that you made some good connections out here. Thank you. I'm always yeah. open to it. I'm. O I think that's my favorite thing with uh, the interviews. To be honest with you, I love collaborating. There's a great mm -hmm. quote that I'm not a tattoo guy. If I wasn't to tattoos, I'd probably have quotes all over my body, yeah. um, because I, I love them so much. And my favorite is John Lennon's: uh, "A dream you dream alone is only a dream. Mm -hmm. A dream you dream together is reality." Yeah, and I love that brick by brick we build it together, and I'm like these interviews. I'm bringing in you know not just comics, poets. My sister's been on for an interview, you know. So I love collaborating. I think I've seen her do hottie. Oh well, on whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> she in Ohio. Um, I uh, I just I love bringing bringing everyone in and, and building something. Yeah, it's cool. yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, that's cool. Dude, have you taken like stand up classes? A uh, couple workshops okay. to tighten it up. Um, How do you feel about those? I think they're great. You do? Shout out FU uh, University. <laughs> That's Flappers University. Okay. Um, Flappers in Burbank. You, if you haven't tried it, um, it's, it's a great school. Uh, I took a couple workshops there, and I learned how to focus on myself as a stand-up. 
um, I would get feedback where it's like, you know, you're funny, but we really don't know who Denny Glasser is. Mm. You know, you're doing impressions. I was kind of into like the puns and such when I first got into stand up. So yeah, I I had to take a, uh, a like a step back and realize like, oh, I wouldn't like that if you know I watched a comedian do it. I'd want to know who that comedian is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I actually you know, started to open up about being from Ohio and being a semen wiper, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it, it started to um, make my stand up stronger and I'm sure. thankful for flappers to, yeah. you know, make me yeah. see it that way because I, I was out there doing Bill Clinton for two or three minutes. <laughs> you can only get so much Bill Clinton. Right. I'm, I'm glad you said it because I've always thought like, I'm never going to take like a stand up class because I feel like there's no... I and mean, I still kind of feel like that way. Like, there's no way to kind of teach someone how to be funny. Because, no. like, even that, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. Because some people are just funny. You can't teach funny. You know. You know. I. I also, and I can't. You, sometimes you can't explain it either. Like, some people are just funny on stage. Like they. Yeah. Like you could take their act, and it would just <laughs> it would not work. You know what I mean? Like it has to be. It's like that person. Hundred percent. And and I think if you're going into it. Anyone listening to this, if you're going into it trying to learn how to be funny, it's it's hard, man. I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player when I was a kid. You can't teach, you know, 95, 99 mile per hour fastballs. So that's yeah, just yeah. something you're, you know, you'd rather got the gift to flick your wrist that fast or not. Yeah. But when it comes to taking stand-up classes, I, I'm a firm believer that they'll give you the tools. Mm-hmm. And my tool belt, like I said, was impressions and it was punts. Yeah. And, and then they actually gave me some tools to start to how to format jokes and patterns to kind of look for and like the rule of three and the rule of three is a good one and you sure and just and getting your in a frame of mind of like trying to actually make it mean something instead of just going up there and and kind of being a talking head trying to mm-hmm. you know pull a jerry seinfeld and make an observation about everything and said the what does the audience really care about and that took me a long time to realize that yeah. you know what do, what am i actually trying to talk about you know and now i don't know I'm, I'm trying to make you rather laugh at something or be like i didn't know that mm-hmm. you know beforehand i didn't know semen wipers weren't well you guys understand <laughs> you could understand where uh, people would get confused with that so now you know you know, yeah, rather you're, you're, it's informative in to some way and there's a strong pov you gotta have a strong pov right Without okay. POV, man, you're you're just up there kind of uh, talking about the weather. Yeah, that's actually good. Uh, some good advice, you know. Like people need to know who you are, and they got because otherwise, if you're just telling jokes, they could just you're just kind of like a voice. Sure. Whereas, like, they could just switch out the person, and there's it wouldn't make a difference, you know, right? Well, I think that's just an everyday life. It's fun to talk, you know, yeah. shop with someone you don't know, but eventually you're gonna be like, "What's your name?" Yeah, yeah. Where are you from? You know? Yeah. And what's up with that beard? Because it, you know, it looks like a weird beard. And then I have to comment that I can't grow hair on these cheeks, but I can grow <laughs> hair on my other cheeks. That's a pilonidal cyst. Now you know what a pilonidal cyst is. That's an ingrown hair that went all the way down to my tailbone. Ugh. Now you know. <laughs> now you know. Before you didn't know. Before we were just talking about how crazy the weather's been this year in LA. And yeah. now you know what a pilonidal cyst is. <laughs> you know? How do, how do you like... Uh, so you're, you're a hustler... <laughs> In terms of comedy, I feel like I try. Sure, and people are like you do two mics now, right? One host, well, host, two yeah, mics two mics and a show, two yes. shows. One, one show, yeah. Okay. Well, how do you do? That? I feel like hosting a mic is so much work. I like it. You do? Yeah, it's because it's long you, and it's it is, but it's rewarding when you get to uh, connect with the community. You know, when mm-hmm. I first moved out here, no one would really give me the time of day. I'd walk up to little groups, try to be the you know, yeah. fun little puppy dog that I am, and they weren't having it. Um, and then the pandemic happened. It's true. I do that too. I'm like, hey, guys. And they're not having it. They're not. You know, they're like. But it's not their fault because they don't know you either. You know what I mean? And comics aren't the best. Uh, I'll just say it. They're not the, the best to uh, strike up conversations. And I'm yeah, not. Yeah, hey, yeah. there are some comics that can. I'm not trying to, you know, say, you know, one. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. But just in general, you know, there's a reason we're doing comedy. You know, we're kind of uh, a little bit broken inside. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll speak for comedians on that regard, you know. Not so, me. I'm just kidding. If you, yeah, there's a couple uh, exceptions to the, to the to that, but <laughs> but they're not they're not out there trying to talk. So a good way to get 
them comfortable with you and you get comfortable with them is uh, yeah. you start a mic. That's right. a that's a pro tip if you're listening in uh, you know um, yeah Kentucky or somewhere that uh, is not here and uh, you want to know how to kind of build a community. I built the underdog. My friend Heather Winter and I were both from Ohio and uh, Did you know her from Ohio. No, but we're okay. actually we were rival high schools. So oh, okay. You know, uh, there's always a chance we go to cross paths. And we, when we met out here, we instantly became friends. That's the rule. If you're from Ohio, you have to. <laughs> there's some that I'm like, I really wouldn't be friends with you if you weren't from Ohio. But yeah, I yeah, yeah. have to be. Well, you, Lucas, Shana. Yeah, we're all friends. Yeah. But you have to be. You know, me and Lucas are actually big rivals. But you have to be friends <laughs> if you're from Ohio. And Heather and I were like, let's, you know, we started hosting flappers mics together. Uh-huh. And then we're like, let's create our own. So it's the underdog, you know, nice. and uh, the, we're proud of the underdog. It embodies who comics are. I feel like especially those that are performing with us and not performing at the comedy store at the moment, yeah. you know, you're an underdog and uh, we do uh, weekly mics and then a showcase at the nice. end of last Wednesday of every month. Yeah. So it's a good way to, you know, build that community. And now there's a community of comedians that knows each other because the underdog. Right. They want to talk to me now because I can help them get a spot yeah. in a show. You know, only reason he's here. No, I'm just kidding. no, no, no. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I feel like, I am like you. I, I go to mics and I try to make friends, but it's right. so hard. It is. It is. It's hard, and I like forget people's names. That doesn't help. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you meet so many people, especially when like I, when I first moved there, I'm like introducing myself to everybody. And yeah. then I'm like forgetting. Some people stick. Some people like don't like try to talk to you. Like the next time they'll see you, they're just like, oh, what's up, man? And you're like, oh, they have no idea who I am. Or they like, yeah. I'm not trying to talk to you. But sometimes you get lucky. Like I just start just talking to Lucas and Shayna. I didn't even recognize Shayna. Like it's maybe the second time that I sat right next to her at the good night. And right. she was like, hey, are you Dorian? I'm like, yeah. That's and awesome. In my mind, I was like, I have no idea who she is. But. <laughs> Shayna's awesome. Yeah, she is great. Um, but yeah, it's hard to make friends out here. But that, here's the, the only reason. I mean, a big part of why I'm doing stand up. This is like my only social interaction. I work from home. That's awesome. But like. It's hard to make friends, but I'm glad, uh, you know, such a cool host like you. I'm thankful for you, buddy. You know, it's it's fun to uh, it's fun to build that community because even when you're going to like the, the improv that we do mm-hmm. on Tuesdays, and you know, the chances of getting up at the improv are pretty slim. Yeah. And I used to view it like a make or break to my day. If I if I didn't get yeah, up, I feel that now. Yeah, it's like you don't get you don't get your name called. It's like that kind of sits and bothers you all day, but. When you but when you do start to meet others, it's almost like it's study hall for you right. know an hour and a half yeah, with your friends. friends. Yeah, and yeah. If, if it gives you a chance to connect with friends, and that's what it's all about. And at the end of the day, this whole journey I've realized is, mm-hmm. you know, obviously I'd love to make it change the lives of my family, mine, and everyone around, anyone I can help. I, I want, that's what I want to make it for. But mm-hmm. if I look back one day and at the very least I got a chance to meet yourself and all the other great, you know, comics out there, kind souls out there. That's what it's all about. Yeah. We're all trying to get that Wizard of Oz, but when you see how the sausage is really made, it's actually really cool to reflect on uh, all the characters you met along the Yellow Brick Road. Right. Do you, um, I don't know, do you get paid to host open mics at Flappers or no? They just give you a no. spot? Yeah, no payment, um, but... It's really neat though to uh, to find I mean, a community. It's a good like, mic. They should pay you. Like, I appreciate that. One of the better mics, I think. Thank you. Um, there. There's no payment, but I mean, honestly, it's not to sound corny, but the payment really is building that community. Mm-hmm. Before the pandemic, you know, I was really I wasn't a lost soul out here, but I was. Just, I just kind of felt like you know I didn't have any com mm. comic friends to turn to and. Right. Uh, during the pandemic, they had Zoom comedy, and flappers needed people um, to run their Zoom mics and run their yeah, yeah, their yeah. Zoom uh, shows, and I did it. And I kind of found a pathway to get into flappers. So when things opened up, flappers didn't forget, you know, of everyone that helped them, which is so cool. Flappers mm-hmm. to, you know, right when the the curtains opened back up, they remembered those that were helping them. Right. When no one wanted to do a Zoom comedy show or yeah. a Zoom mic, you were those hosting were, their their Zoom mic. Oh yeah, those were Dude, those were interesting, rough. very rough. But I'm I'm thankful that you know that 
because of that, that opened yeah. the door to me having an opportunity with flappers. And right. man, That's I met you through flappers. I met so many great, great friends through flappers that had it not been for yeah. flappers. Dude, it shows that if you hustle, you have to hustle to get, cause I you would never to. do a zoom mic. Like I would not even do a zoom show. Oh, those were that. extremely rough. The only thing I enjoyed about those is if someone was carrying on too much, you had a heckler, very easy to find living room hecklers. You boot just them. mute them. You just mute them. <laughs> okay. I mean, you could boot them, but you know they paid a ticket. They can still listen to the show. But I love the ability to be like, "You're done." Yeah, yeah you're yeah, done. Yeah. You and that you, happened. How do you hear people laugh though? Because you got everybody has to mute themselves because you don't want to. That was the part feedback. of it. Yeah, you know. So people just the Wi-Fi was lagging. Yeah. You know, people <laughs> may not laugh because they're just like, you know, we don't see human interactions anymore. This is during lockdowns and such yeah the panty so you know people didn't know really how to have human interactions they forgot and they yeah, were just yeah. kind of like stare at us the camera and um yeah i mean it was interesting times but it's i'm always trying to find silver linings and things and had that not happened man i don't think i'd be talking to you right now mm -hmm. you know i really think like that's i, I wouldn't I mean, I would have met you on some other mic i'm sure maybe but I don't even know if I'd be, you know, Dude. as involved just because okay. Flappers really, that's how I met Heather. That's how the underdog was born. Okay. You know, that's how I, um, that's how you made all your connections to uh, yeah. other comics. Yeah. So maybe, the, you know, what's meant to be will be things would always kind of sur come to the surface that are supposed to, but, mm -hmm. um, Flappers definitely ignited something. And I'm, okay. if you're, again, if you're listening, that's, that's the jam right there. Go to Flappers. And if you're Flappers and you're listening to this, like, let him book a be a booker there. Hire him. Wouldn't be your words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a dream, right? To work at a, a comedy club. Yeah. Uh, or you don't even want that. The dream for me is to be world renowned. Right. I. I mean, so is everybody. I don't think that's that. true. I had a buddy. Uh, uh, I remember after I moved to Chicago, my. My buddy um, ran into my mom, and she's telling you know him everything that I'm up to, and mm -hmm. he goes, "Yeah, he needs a lot of people," and <laughs> it's like it, it, that's not the craziest story that I could tell you what right now, mean? but need he he needs a lot of people. Meaning, if I have even a thousand people in a show, I want more. Right. It's something in me that just like I want. I if I could have the whole world watching my comedy, yeah, I think I'd still be like. But what about the aliens? Yeah. Dude, that's a good dream. Like when I perform I in a room of like 20 people, I was like, oh man, it's packed. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like other people are like, dude, this is like, there's nobody here. I don't even want to perform. And I'm like, ah. Sure. But I'm at the point where I, I'm just excited to see like regular people. Yeah. Like Non-comics in a, at an open mic or whatnot. Those are like the best. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, hey, you're in the weight room. You're having yeah. fun. Yeah, and uh, we're building something. You were doing. You were hosting a show before uh, Underdogs, right? Yeah. I had, how do you, uh, How do you get like a crowd to show up? Did you charge money for those tickets? When yeah. You were a show? Yeah, I ran the uh, Nifty Cat show again at Flappers. Um, I ran the Nifty Cat show for a small run, um, and you know, I just did my all time best of okay. of. Do they post every your stuff on Flappers? Yeah, they were promoting okay. for us. You just try to reach out the best you can, and yeah. uh, you know, if some, it's, it's usually when someone you know is asking, you know, when's your next show? That's mm -hmm. that's your best get because yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know it's hard to it's hard to get people off the street to just want to come see right. comedy even for free. It's hard yeah. to see it. So I was, you know. I mean, I was, I was hosting a show. This was in San Francisco, and it's so rough. But we were also in like probably like a really rough part of town in the tenderloin i'm not sure if you know, uh, know what the, but that's where like all the homeless people were at. okay and it was just like me and this other host it was just our friends coming you know what i mean and it's like once in a while we'll get you know like a stranger or someone but like yeah. it's it's a hard it's a hard thing to do if no, you, yeah. it's hard if you don't want to pay because like i know other people that host shows they would pay like instagram ads and sure pay for all these they'll invest in it yeah do you do that or you just do word of mouth and just post on instagram and yeah word of mouth um you know we always hype up all the the comics that are on the show because yeah it's so funny you know that was my train of thought a moment ago is you know so many people ask you when's your next show but then they, they don't go so right so you know we, we try to hype it up as much as possible when comics are on it's like hey this is a great showcase 
because we actually give more than five minutes and you know it's hard to find stage time mm-hmm. in la you know so uh i should it's easy to find it for open mics but to have a show with an audience with you know seven minutes that's valuable and yeah. uh so we we try to generate excitement within our lineup to just be like hey if yeah. everybody brings a few people it'll be great you have there you have is. like a like a lineup of seven people everybody brings like three people that's pretty good room and if, they if you're doing them, the math that's yeah 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 it's very good yeah do you, how how do you do you write a lot how what is your writing process like my writing process is <laughs> funny enough i always kind of think of it as like little wayne little wayne never um, writes never really puts it on paper once in a while i'll put something on the old phone okay. um just so I don't maybe forget like a premise of something. Mm-hmm. But I find if I write something down and I'm worried too much to keep it to that script and my scatterbrain, I'm all over the place in my notes. So if I'm trying to keep up like this mm-hmm. worked, that needs adjusted, that definitely needs taken out and that needs added, it's going to get mumbo jumbo. So instead, somehow mm-hmm. I write all up here and I'll just keep mental notes. That worked. I need to rephrase that, stuff like that. And, and as far as coming up with ideas, um, I just, anymore at this point, I'm just trying to keep it super real. You know, my wife and I got married last year. Now people are asking us, when's the baby coming? That's a bit, you know, take it and run with it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, stuff about from being from Ohio, that resonates with people. Mm-hmm. Also from Ohio or just people that have no clue what it's like living in Ohio might want to learn, a, hear about it a little bit. Maybe they might not want to learn anything about Ohio, but... Yeah, at least got their attention, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, if it resonates with me, it's if it's something I care about, and I'm I have a strong POV. Do you that's keep, my writing. Do you so. keep like a maybe like a notebook or something of like maybe just keywords to your bits? Because I I write everything. I do a little differently, but I, I forget jokes all the time. Like I just forget I have a joke. Yeah, I I definitely have a, a, probably ten notepads at home mm-hmm. outside of my phone that. Once in a while, I'm like, let me get my crap together. Mm -hmm. Let me write down every joke that I know in this head that's worked, that if I had to go do, you know, a Just for Laughs audition right now, Mm -hmm. I would consider it from this group of 10, 20 jokes that I have in my arsenal. Yeah. Um, So I I have them written down, but um, it was good because you should have it. You know, you also shouldn't... I Do whatever you want to do, but I I personally don't think you should be doing uh, the same jokes over and over and over again and, and mm-hmm. you know I, I think you should be challenging yourself and you should also bring some different yeah well I, i'm actually telling on that because i see i'm i get anxiety when i feel like i'm doing the same jokes for more than two three weeks at the same venue sure the open mic yeah but then i'm like i feel like i might be moving on a little too fast yeah but i, I that's interesting too but then i'm like i can't do the but then i feel like i'm, I'm you know what i mean like i don't know no, there's there's a lot of truth it's behind true. that. You should you do the same. You should do like this. I can see you should do the same like five minutes or three minutes until you know it's gonna kill. So when you go to improv or when you go to a uh, comedy store, like that will get you in. That's true. You shouldn't ditch something, you know, before yeah. it's ready. I like to use the analogy of just like having it in the garage until yeah. I'm ready to showcase it. You know, so I'll keep working on every piece of that joke in the garage mm-hmm. at Mike's. Yeah, t- workshop with friends, um, but uh, I found I heard actually something interesting. I got a chance to um, during a uh, Q and A of a uh, podcast, um, fly on the wall. Dana Carvey, uh, David Spade, and Adam Sandler. I got a chance mm-hmm. to do. A, uh, I was one of the uh, audience members that could do a little Q and A, and you know I asked them some questions, and and it was really neat to just hear their feedback. And one of the things that stuck out was Adam Sandler saying just to focus on five good minutes, Mm -hmm. you know? I think we all get caught up on like, you know, well, Netflix specials are about... Too long. 45, 50, yeah, 45, 50 minutes. You got to make sure you have, you know, all that material. And it's like, let's walk before we run, you know, and then before we do a a huge sprint. And yeah, you should definitely focus on, you know, Mm -hmm. if if you don't have five minutes yet, focus on that and... Mm -hmm. And then maybe go back in the garage. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, uh, I, yeah. I do, I do different. I like, I think of a joke, and then I just go on stage with it, and bomb maybe or do okay. And then after a few times, I'm like, I need to write this down. Sure. 
because I'm like I feel like I would forget, but it's well, once is a fluke, twice is a pattern. So <laughs> you know, and if you keep if you keep rather doing that yeah. same joke and you're getting maybe a not an ideal or vice versa, a great response. That's usually a good indicator. I always say like my. I, I don't really ask for any critique. If I get it, that's great, but I don't really need it because the laughter will provide all that for me. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're doing a joke for a month straight and it has not hit, mm-hmm. maybe it's not them. Yeah. You know, but vice versa, if you're doing something that is hitting, you well, know. What of st- stuff that I feel like is hitting and it stops hitting? And that's when I feel like it's because the audience already knows my that jokes and I, and I just mean the audience i mean like open other open micers you know it's funny though i I've, i'm such an analytical person in some regards that i i like nerd out with what is working for a comedian mm-hmm. what 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 is really like the secret sauce to making every single time they go up even if they don't have their best jokes working that night what's working and it does, it's not trying i'm not trying to sound like a californian but it's the vibe it's your energy. Mm-hmm. It definitely is. And, and it's like, if you're going up there, like, they might know this joke already. I had a teacher once tell me, I had a similar thought, like, you know, well, they know what's coming. Yeah. They see the fastball before I even throw the fastball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not a hit, <laughs> but they see it coming. Yeah. Um, I, I had a teacher say, yeah, but Jim Gaffigan never does that with his Hot Pockets bit. Mm-hmm. All of us love his Hot Pockets bit. We know it's coming when he starts it up. Yeah. Hot yeah. Pockets. Love it. So it's like, it's just that energy that you, if you give it, it almost becomes like play your hits. Mm-hmm. P- fans will, even if they've heard that song 500 times, mm-hmm. nothing's going to stop them from wanting to hear it 501 yeah. times. Yeah. You know, but it's that energy that you give it that. It really is the energy. Yeah. Like when I, when I feel like I'm going to go up there and kill, I typically do better. You know what I mean? Other, like sometimes when it kind of, the mic's kind of dragging. Sure. And I'm like going up late. And when I'm not into it, I could kind of feel the crowd's not into it. Yeah. You know? You know what else is was, <laughs> I need to get better at is like if I feel good and I go up and I immediately bomb and I'm just like, oh, and I could feel the energy. Sure. Yeah. It's hard to just keep it keep it going, you know? No, that's true. It's it, it it's hard to kind of sit in it when, when you're there, but... And um, like pretend like you're not bombing. But, yeah. you know, on the other end, lean into it you yeah, know yeah, embr- yeah. embrace what you're doing at that moment own it and and uh who knows there might be some tiny little gem at the end of that right <laughs> crusty pit of of bombing that you might be like there's rather something to take from it or even salvage your set and yeah yeah, yeah. you know try to pull the parachute but it's all process and yeah. and i i think um i think falling down scraping your knee is is better than always doing the safe joke or you know the only five minutes that you've ever done yeah. over and over again sure well dude thanks i think it's almost we did like 40 that time minutes. thank um, you dorian dude i would love to have you back on that you gave like a lot of good information i appreciate tonight. it man. thanks for sharing hey i'm, I'm thankful grateful for you grateful for all you guys listening thank you in advance and love to come <laughs> back yeah, tell them uh, when are your mics and your shows again. Yes. Um, so we'll start with the uh, Wednesday, The Underdog. Heather Winter, Denny Glasser, myself, we run The Underdog every Wednesday at in Valley Village, Kahuna Tiki 2. Find me on Instagram for those um, extra details, maybe the address and such. What time? Um, 8 o'clock to 9.30. Um, and we do uh, a mic every Wednesday. And then the last Wednesday of every month, Starting in May, uh, we're going to bring back our showcase. So that's going to be an, a free hour show. Nice. Uh, and then Flappers. Yeah. Can't say Flappers enough on this pod. Um, flappers, uh, Thursday nights. It, do, it is subject to change, but typically 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And uh, both are a great time. You should, uh, if you're listening, you should stop by and uh, hang out. For sure. All right, man. Thanks. Peace out, guys. Bye, guys.